If you walked through a city 200 years ago, every light you saw was powered by a dead sperm whale. Every ticking clock, factory machine, and expensive perfume. This animal didn't just die for industry. It became industry, and it nearly erased them. The sperm whale is the largest predator with teeth on Earth, reaching over 18 meters in length and diving to nearly 3,000 meters into total darkness. But for centuries, humans didn't care about how deep it dove or how intelligent it was. They cared about what they could take from it. These are some of the things humans killed sperm whales for. We start with sperm whale teeth. Their teeth are massive, solid and unmistakable. Each one can grow over 20 centimeters long, heavy enough to feel like stone in the hand. To sailors, these were not teeth. They were trophies. Whalers carved them into objects called scrimshaw. Detailed scenes of ships, hunts, storms and dying whales were etched directly into the teeth using needles and soot. Chess pieces, canes, jewelry, piano keys. Entire personal collections were made from the mouth of a dead animal. Museums today still display hundreds of these carvings, often signed by the men who killed the whale. Unlike ivory taken quietly from land animals, these teeth came from violent hunts at sea. Each carving was proof that a whale had been harpooned, exhausted and butchered by hand. The art did not honor the animal. It celebrated the kill. There are photos of deck tables covered in teeth, sailors leaning over them with tools, carving scenes of the same hunt they had just survived. The whale's mouth became a souvenir stand. This one is very unsettling. Sperm whale candle. Inside the sperm whale's head, is a chamber filled with a waxy substance called spermaceti. When refined, it produces one of the cleanest burning fuels humans ever discovered. Spermaceti candles burned brighter and longer and without the smoke or smell of animal fat. By the 18th and 19th centuries, these candles lit churches, palaces, homes, and entire city streets. One large sperm whale could produce enough spermaceti to make hundreds of high-quality candles. Cities like London and New York quite literally glowed because whales were dying far offshore. Historical paintings show candle-lit rooms filled with steady white light. What they do not show is the floating carcass left behind once the head was cut open and drained. To the people buying the candles, the whale did not exist anymore. Only the light did. Museum footage shows original spermaceti candles still intact, pale and smooth, their flames once considered a symbol of progress. Each one represents hours of pursuit and an animal dismantled at sea. So if turning a living animal into household objects sounds unsettling, like and subscribe, because somehow it gets worse. By the time humans figured out how valuable sperm whale really was, the hunt stopped being occasional. It became global. Sperm whales weren't just killed to power daily life. They were killed to make war work better. Before modern synthetic oils existed, sperm whale oil became essential for precision instruments, the kinds used by navies, armies and explorers. It did not thicken in cold, it did not evaporate in heat, and it kept delicate mechanisms moving smoothly when failure meant ships lost at sea or weapons misfiring. Chronometers used for navigation relied on sperm whale oil to keep exact time. Without it, ships could not calculate longitude accurately. Cannons, gun mounts and naval equipment were lubricated with it to reduce friction and wear. Even early submarine and torpedo components depended on whale-derived lubricants to function under pressure and salt exposure. This was not about comfort or convenience. 
it was about control. Entire military fleets quietly depended on a substance rendered from the bodies of whales. The smoother the machine ran, the more effective the force became. Whales were turned into invisible support systems for conflict. Their deaths built into the mechanics of expansion, colonization, and warfare. They did not just fuel progress, they helped refine humanity's ability to destroy. The next one is oil. Sperm whale oil wasn't just useful. For a long time, it was the most valuable oil on Earth. Once humans realized how valuable sperm whale oil truly was, the hunt escalated beyond reason. Sperm whale oil became one of the most valuable liquids on Earth during the 18th and 19th centuries. A single large whale could yield over 3,000 liters, enough to supply lamps, machines, and industries across continents. Unlike oil from other whales, it remained stable in extreme temperatures, making it perfect for global trade. Whaling fleets expanded rapidly. Ships sailed for years at a time, crossing every major ocean. Logbooks show whales hunted relentlessly, boiled down at sea, and reduced to barrels of oil stacked in ports across Europe and North America. The scale was industrial. The methodical efficiency was chilling. Whole populations vanished from familiar waters. As local numbers collapsed, ships pushed farther into remote regions, hunting until sightings became rare. Sperm whales weren't killed individually anymore. They were extracted like a natural resource with no assumed limit. By the time alternatives appeared, the damage was done. The ocean had been emptied faster than anyone expected. This wasn't hunting. It was a global liquidation of life. Deep inside some sperm whales, something rare and deeply unnatural can form. When a whale swallows squid, the sharp, indigestible beaks scrape and stab the lining of its intestines. Over time, the irritation becomes dangerous. So the whale does what its body knows how to do. It protects itself. Layer by layer, it coats the problem in a waxy substance, sealing the damage inside its own gut. That substance is ambergris. At first, ambergris smells foul. It's soft, greasy, and unmistakably biological. But when it escapes the whale and drifts through the ocean for years, sunlight and salt slowly transform it. The smell changes. It becomes warm, sweet, complex. And humans discovered that even a tiny amount could lock perfume to the skin for hours, sometimes days. Ambergris became one of the most valuable materials on Earth worth more than gold by weight. Coveted by royalty, emperors, and luxury perfume houses, bottled elegance, distilled from an animal's internal injury. And humans didn't wait for ambergris to wash ashore. Whalers cut open sperm whales specifically hoping to find it. Entire animals were killed on the chance that this waxy mass might be inside. Most whales didn't have any. Some did. Those rare discoveries were enough to justify the slaughter of countless others. There are photographs of ambergris being lifted from opened whale bodies. Large grey lumps held up like treasure. No one in the image is looking at the whale. They are looking at the prize. The most disturbing part is not what ambergris is. It is what it represents. Pain, pressure and survival turned into luxury. A defensive response inside a living animal transformed into a scent worn to feel attractive. When you look at the list as a whole, it becomes clear that sperm whales weren't hunted because they were dangerous. They were hunted because humans found a way to use every part of them. But that wasn't the end of the story. By the late 20th century, the scale of the damage became impossible to ignore. Global whaling bans, international protections, and the collapse of commercial sperm whaling gave the species something it hadn't had in centuries. Time. 
Today, sperm whales are protected under international law, and while they are still listed as vulnerable, their numbers are slowly increasing in parts of the world. Long-term studies show stable or recovering populations in the Pacific and Atlantic, with calves being born into oceans no longer filled with harpoons. Ship strikes, noise pollution, and plastic remain serious threats. But for the first time in generations, sperm whales are surviving long enough to grow old, raise young, and return to the deep on their own terms. The ocean didn't forgive us, but it gave them a second chance. I'd appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see what these animals become when they return to the depths they were built for, watch why sperm whales get deadlier the deeper you go.